the season of the falling of the former and the latter rain. And uh, when, when I say former and latter rain, uh, for most people, prophetically, that sounds like something that is for the general church world, for you know the remnant of the Gentiles, for the church world in general, where God said He's going to pour out His Spirit and so forth and so on. And even though there is truth in that, but the former and the, and the latter rain also has to do with you personally. You can have a former and latter rain experience long before the prophetic fulfillment in general over the church world. This experience can be yours, and I believe God wants it to be yours, very shortly around the corner. I believe a, a move of God is coming on the people of God. Hey, so high. Uh, somebody needs to help me with that. Reach the high about that higher. Bless the Lord. And you will understand when we go through these lessons that I hope to share on this, uh, why I'm saying that and why it's important that we have this experience personally. It doesn't matter where you look at prophecy in God's Word, whether it be uh, past prophecy fulfilled, present day, or future prophecy. Every prophetic word of God given in all 66 books is personal because all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the church may be perfect? That what? Ah, the individual, that the man of God, that the individual, that the person, that you may be perfected or equipped to be fully and, and utterly furnished unto the works that are shkebo sota badahaya that God has called us and ordained us to fulfill in this thing called time. We can be very revved up about uh, a distant goal and vision for eternity, and we should. But I teach all the time, I sound like a broken record, where there is one side of truth, there is another side of truth. So there is an eternal vision. There is a vision going out there yonder, which is way out there in the distance. But there must be a current vision for the present, for the moment, for time, for where you are walking in your relationship with God. So the prophetic word of God goes to the past, to the present, and to the future. This is why the beings around God's throne, they had eyes within, they had eyes forward, they had eyes back, because they're full of prophecy. But all of that prophetic truth, whether it be past, present, or future, is relative for now. It is relative for your personal growth, life, and fulfillment of God's eternal and purpose for you in time and for eternity. Thank you, Lord. So I'm teaching on this in both senses, prophetic for the coming days and prophetic for the moment where we are in God's calendar or time clock and that which He wants to fulfill in your life and my life. And I, 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 I can already, I started to feel the raindrops. How so When I was in the Faroe Islands, that's when the first drops began to fall on me. And I was uh, at home for almost three weeks with a kidney stone that I thought was going to kill me. I've never in my life had such excruciating pain. I ended up four times in the hospital. It was so bad. And then uh, you all prayed, other people prayed, and the thing disappeared. Wow. Literally disappeared. 
I never, I never passed the kidney stone. I haven't passed it. It's just gone. So God, but God was in all that because I needed a time of seclusion. God put me away where I, I, couldn't, I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. And so I just shut myself in. Just, just everybody leave me alone. I, I, I'm in too much pain. I don't even want to talk to you. I can't even hear you. And even though they put me on a, a morphine-like su- substance that I tried to stay away from, when I got really bad, I admit, I took it. <laughs> Woo, it was tough. However, it was in that time where I began to feel the raindrops. And I knew then, ah, we're getting close to that day. We are getting close to the falling of the former and the latter rain. Glory be to God. And you think I'm not excited about that? Watch this space. Hallelujah. Woo! So it's exciting. I am, did I tell you to go to Hosea? Well, you all should have just known that. Get in the spirit and you will know these things. Hosea chapter 6 is where I'm heading first off. And next week, once I've completed the notes on this subject, I will uh, print them out, or we will have them printed out for you, and I'll give you a set of notes, because you never cover everything God gives you on any subject. Okay, are you all there? Hosea. It's in the Old Testament. Hosea, chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 1. Oh, Jesus. Sister Joy Brooks, it's a pleasure to my eyes to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Sister Brooks and us, we go back so many years, long before all of you. I mean, way back to New Zealand days. And boy, did we have some times together. So it's a pleasure to see you this morning, sister. God bless you. Come, verse 1. Let us. Return. Oh, there's that word we don't like. Shub. Shub means repent. Come, let us repent. It means to turn back to the starting point. Go back to the foot of the cross. Go back to where it all started for you. Go back to the small place. Go back to where you were nothing but a rotten scoundrel, filthy rag sinner. Because guess what? That's what we still are. Go back and acknowledge and recognize who you are, what you are, and how much you need God. Ha! Ah, shut a high. Oh, come. Let us return. Let us go back to the starting point. Let us go to a place of restoration. Let us go back again. The word shub actually means again. Back again. This again. Touch again. Go again. Return again. Anything connected to this again. In other words, it's, some, it's a place where you have already been. You can't, you, 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 ah, you cannot again something that's never been. You can only again when you have tasted and experienced and been and walked and touched. Touch again, see again, feel again, know again, go. Ah. Ah. Man, I feel it more than that. Somebody help me. Hey, Glory to God. See, people, people, I say people. 
That includes you and me. We have a tendency to forget the again. Like, I've moved on. I want a new experience. And the thing is, this hunger in us for a new experience is birthed by God. But what we don't understand is, is this hunger for a new experience, and the new experience itself must be connected to the again. It must be joined to what you already have, to the experience you already have, to what you have already tasted, to the ground where you have already walked. And we have all come to this place. We have all walked in the place, if you're honest, that is, where we say, I'm beyond that. I'm I'm up here now. And when when we do that, and we let go of the again, we fall short of reaching the mark and the destiny that God has for us because it must always be connected to where you come from. It makes me, yet frankly, if you ever want to see me mad, put me around people who have thrown it all away. Just put me around that kind of people who have thrown it all away. Yeah, those experiences, oh, what happened there, Hallelujah. I want to tell people like that, I think you are certifiably insane. To have walked in something, experienced something, knowing something, embracing something, fighting for something, giving your life for something, only to come to a place where you say, "Eh, it's not real, it's not true, I don't want it. Some people 20, 30, or 40 years And then all of a sudden, ah, I had a revelation. It's all wrong. Yeah, you had a revelation, all right, a demonic one from the pit of hell. This whole uh, former and latter rain experience. I want to get ahead of myself, but I'm trying to slow down. (laughs) Hallelujah. And no, it's not coffee. I really, I didn't have a lot of coffee this morning. I'm excited. That's what it is. Glory to God. Glory to God. This whole moving forward, this latter, former and latter rain experience God wants to personally give you and then give the church, the, uh, spe- specifically the remnant people of God, wherever and whoever they may be, must be connected to where you have come from. It's got to be connected to the beginning. Okay, moving on. All right. Let us return unto the church. What now? The Lord. Who, who, the who, what? The Lord. Ooh. What a secret right there. Amen. Let us return to the Lord. It's not about a church. It's not about a doctrine. Not about a personality. Not about a person. It's about the Lord. Amen. It is about returning to the Lord. We were talking with a sister, I won't say who, but you don't know her anyway. And uh, she's from a particular denomination, if you want to call it that. And she said to us, when I first met you both, I started to question where I was walking in my spiritual life because there was something about your life that made me see there's more 
than what I have. Amen. And she said, because where I go, where I come from, everything is about just going over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and again. The same old, 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 forever and ever and ever and ever and no progression. Thank you, Lord. And that, this is a sad, a sad state of affairs that many called people of God find themselves in. They get stuck to a personality. They even get stuck to a particular doctrine. I'm not stuck to even my own doctrine. I'm willing for change. I'm willing for growth. Just because I believe something today I see it. I, I'm convinced of it. I'm convicted of it. But you know, there have been many things down through my years, and especially the last eight, nine years, that I thought I believed. And all of a sudden I realized, hmm, that doesn't look quite right. And so you got to humble yourself and realize, I'm wrong. So just because you hold on to something today, yes, there's truth. Truth is truth. When you see the truth, you hold on to the truth, you embrace the truth. But don't even fall in love with that. Don't fall in love what comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Fall in love with the mouth that speaks it. Hey, sir! It is His mouth. It is returning to the, well, the Lord told me this. And, and he, maybe, maybe that's your experience. Maybe it's true. But are you in love with what you heard? Or are you in love with the lips that spoke what you heard? And we get in trouble when we fall in love with the things that we believe and, and we embrace and we hold on to. And nothing wrong with embracing and standing firm. We should. But it must be because of the Lord. Yeah. Come, let us shub, let us repent, let us restore our faith in the Lord, our love for the Lord, our desire for the Lord, our hunger for the Lord, our thirst for the Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo! Must be the Lord. If it's not the Lord, we are failing. <clears throat> Let us return to the Lord. For he has torn. And he will heal us. He has smitten. <laughs> and he will bind us up. This word torn means to pluck off and to pull to pieces. And this word smitten means to be stricken, to be given wounds. How many of you feel over a period of time in your life you feel like you've been torn and you've been smitten? And, and the devil comes along to you and says, see, you missed it. You made a mistake. You didn't do what you should have done. But tell me about it. Yes. Yes. I know. I've been there, experienced that. You know, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? You feel God tearing at you, smiting, not to destroy, but to heal. Not to kill, but to bind into the perfection of his purpose. But before he can do that, before the prophetic word of God can heal and bind together, it's got to crush, it's got to smash, it's got to tear apart, it's got to tear. I shut the high and the high. Glory to God. Come on, bear witness if you're with me here today. It's true. Come. This is the time. Let us return to the Lord. Because He is the one that has torn. 
but he will heal us. He is the one that has smitten, but he will bind us up. Because that was the whole purpose of him tearing and smiting, was to get our attention enough to where we will long and desire to return to the Lord. That's what it's all about. Come, let us return because he has done this. He has torn. He has smitten. But when we return, he heals and he binds. It's sad how many of God's people live unfulfilled, unaccomplished, in a state of misery and wounds, bleeding, unhealed, uh, just miserable existence. A lot of people I talk to. And all the time God is saying, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just trying to get you to turn around. I'm trying to get you to come back to me. Nothing else. Well, you don't understand. Yeah, I do, actually. Well, you don't know what it's been like. Yeah, actually, I do. Because what you have been through, we have been through. Amen. What you experience, we experience. Nobody's excluded from this. And even though the feelings and the emotions and the circumstances may be different, yet in the spirit, it is all the same. And God has done it and is doing it for one purpose and one purpose only, to cause us to return unto the Lord. Whew. Now listen. Oh, this just gets better. He says, after two days, He will revive us. In the third day, He will raise us up and we shall live in His sight. These two days, we're talking about three days here. A three-day period. Now, slow down with me. Don't think about a physical week. We are talking here about prophecy. Prophecy is analytical. Prophecy is symbolic. Prophecy is metaphoric. And he's talking here about three days. He says, after two days or after a two-cycle period. That's what a day is. It is a complete 24-hour cycle. Is that right? So after two-cycle period, there's going to come a third day. He said, after... See, a lot of us have been going through these cycles. We've been going through one cycle and then another cycle. And it's like, oh, really? I thought I'd started something new. And you did, but you expected it to be something great and wonderful. But it was just another cycle. One was about being torn and the other one was about being smitten. And that's where a lot of people have lost hope. People have lost hope. Many people have. Like, you know, but I just, I may as well quit. Because we've gone through this cycle and like, oh, you know, I, I feel a new day coming. I feel a new cycle. We finished the first cycle and we come into the second cycle. Yay! Bang! Smitten. How many relate to what I'm talking about? Oh, I'm talking to the right church. Yeah, give the Lord a good hand. That's all right. Then the Lord said, after the two days, I'm going to revive you. This word revive, it means I'm going to recover you, repair you, make you alive again, nourish you, restore you, and preserve you. After these cycles are being torn and smitten, God said, I am going to revive you. 
That means the two cycles are over. Two days. After the two days. But then he says, in the third day, in the third cycle, hallelujah, I will raise you up. He will raise us up to become powerful, it means. To be erected. To be confirmed. For God to confirm His purpose, His destiny, His desire, and His will. There's nothing like it when somebody confirms. Let's say, for example, you go to uh, the bank. And you want to take out a large sum of money. And the bank says, I don't know if that's the case here, but... Uh, in other countries, there are certain rules and regulations. Somebody needs to confirm your identity. We just went to uh, Notary Public a few days ago concerning our house in South Africa. We needed a Notary Public to uh, sign off on our signatures and yeah, yeah. Then it needed to go and have a, be a postal. It needed to go to the clerk of the county and, and all that kind of stuff. It, it's just, you know what they're doing? They are confirming who you are. How do you think it feels like when God confirms who you are? Hallelujah. And this is the problem. I know I've said it before, and I will probably say it again until we get to that confirmation. The problem with many people is they don't know who they are. Don't know who they are in God. Don't know who God has purposed them to be. Don't know the call of God on their lives. Somewhere around the corner, I'm going to teach here on the fivefold ministry. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And I'm going to show you the different mantles and anointings that God has given to the church, His church, for the saints of God to be equipped To fulfill the works of God. It's powerful. But for that to happen, you need confirmation of who you are. When I was in the Faroe Islands, I had three confirmations. One in the Pharaohs and two from elsewhere. They came to me confirming what God had already told me of who I was. But I don't go around saying it. I'm not going to say it. I know. That's all that matters. You don't need to know. If you need to know, God will tell you. But you need to know who you are. So who are you? Uh. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a saint that goes to church on Sunday. I, I pay my tithes. Well, that's good. Don't forget that. But who are you? What is God's purpose for you in the big scheme of things? It's not just to come and warm a seat. We are called for something. We're called to a generation. This is the generation of those that seek God, David said. What generation is it? It's a holy generation. It is a royal priesthood. It is a peculiar people whom God has called and set apart for himself for such a time as this. And if we don't return to the Lord and find our place and know and have confirmed who we are. Yeah. How will you even know who you are in the coming eternity? Yeah. Come on. You won't. Ah. Am I making sense or am I? Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. So he tears. He smites. He heals. And he binds. So that he can revive, restore, repair, 
and raise us, confirm who you are. But you see, once you have returned to the Lord, and the Lord is all, and it's all for Him and about Him, you can handle God telling you who you are. Because it's no longer about you. It's no longer about you. It's no longer about your position. No longer about your title. No longer about your... You don't care anymore about nothing. All you care about is, I have come to the Lord. It must be about the Lord. And the Lord says, okay. Now I trust you. Now I trust to confirm. Now I trust to raise you up. Glory to God. People write to me and they sign their names, apostle so-and-so and prophet so-and-so. I, 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 so, mm, I so badly want to write back to them and say, who confirmed that? You? Well, anybody can call themselves anything they want. Well, God bless you. I'm, I'm prophet so-and-so. No, you're not. You're no more prophet than my shoe. My shoe's more prophet than you are. But when God confirms, you know where and how he does it? Through the people. It's never through you yourself. Jesus didn't even confirm who he was. He asked them, who do men say I am? And Peter, you're the Christ. Ah, I didn't tell you that. My father told you that. So I'm running over a lot of topics here. But you can write these down in your little notes and go home and have fun. Okay. And we shall, when God does this, when he revives us and raises us up, then we shall live. In his sight. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth. Is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain. The latter and the former rain. Unto the earth. So what I've just been talking about is prelude. To the rain. Being torn and being smitten, being healed and being bound up, being revived and being raised up is all prelude to the rain. It's not that God's going to pour down the rain on our hopeless condition. No. He starts to work on us to bring us into this place of the rain. A lot of people say, oh, well, when the rain comes, then I'll really, I'll really run on then. When the rain comes, when the former and the latter rain fall, then I'll really have the power. And then I'll really know him. No, it doesn't work like that. This is where people have got it wrong. Why? Why will many people not experience the former and latter rain? Because they refuse to return. Refuse to go back and connect to the beginning, to the foot of the cross, to the blood, to the fire, to the water. Thank you, Lord. That's my beginning. Am I making sense? I believe, and I believe I'm speaking prophetically, that many of you here today and hear the sound of my voice through other means, I believe that many of us are going to soon come in to our experience with the former and the latter rain. We are coming into our third day or this third cycle. 
It's amazing what happened in God's Word on the third day. Jesus arose from the dead on the third day. The Father confirming who His Son was. Hello. This is my Son. Boom. He got Him up out of the grave. The Holy Ghost descended on the day of Pentecost, not at the second hour, not at the fourth hour, not at the ninth hour, but the third hour. Acts 2.15. Joel 2.1, I mean John 2.1, the miracle that Jesus did in Cana, his first public miracle in the marriage, Bible says, was done on the third hour. Day. Miraculous, powerful, potent wine. Life. Restoration. Revigoration. The third day of creation in Genesis 1, 4, 4, uh, 14, and uh, 11 to 13 rather. The third day of creation, God commanded the earth to bring forth grass. Herb yielding seed and fruit trees. Third day. That's powerful. What happened on the third day? Life, growth, seed, fruit. Ah, it's so high. It all happened on the third day. Glory be to God. When Abraham took his son Isaac to go and fulfill the father's purpose and offer his only begotten son, he saw Moriah on the third day that they traveled. And on the third day, he lifted up his eyes. And there he saw, Genesis 22, 4, the restored temple after the people of God came back from Babylon. The restored temple in Ezra, Somewhere in Ezra. Chapter 6, I believe it is. It was completed. The temple was completed on the third day of Adar. Why does God give all these little details? Because the third day holds a secret. This third cycle is full of refreshing, of reviving, of invigorating life, of substance, of growth of completion. Am I making sense? And this is what the former and the latter rain is all about. The former rain fell in the time of the planting of the seed to germinate the seed. The latter rain fell in the month Nisan, which is the first month of the Jewish year. But it was also the harvest time. And the latter rain came to make the fruit plump and full of juice and life and growth. And God said, I'm not going to send the former and the latter rain in their seasons. I'm going to send them all at once. I'm going to send the former rain and the latter rain together because God is going to do a quick miraculous work in us and that seed that has been dormant in your heart, some of us for years and years and years, that ah, I wish somebody would help me here glory to God That seed is going to finally germinate. And not only is it going to germinate, but as quickly as it does, it is going to produce fruit. God is going to do a fast. This is not going to be a pouring down of the rain of the Spirit and the Word and the presence and the glory of God that's going to go on for years or even months. I don't believe it. I believe it is going to be spontaneous, quick, 
powerful move of God in our lives and within the church world, the remnant people of God in particular. Oh, it's so exciting. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And then let's, let's go to, I, I want to read this one because this one's good. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus uh, sent his disciples to Herod, uh, not his disciples, those that came to speak to him about Herod. He sent them back to Herod with this message. I'm in verse 32. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Oh, I just love that. People think, oh, don't be so harsh. No, there are foxes around. And, and a fox is a fox. And a fox needs to be identified as a fox. If there's a snake on the floor, I'm not going to say to you, oh, don't call it a snake. It's a nice snake. No, it's a snake. It needs to be trampled on and destroyed. I'm, I call, I'm, I'm beyond, I'm done Dancing around people's flesh. I, I don't have time for it. You don't have time for it. We don't have time for it. Glory be to God. It is what it is. I will stand for what it is. I will pay the price for what it is. Because I've got something I've got to do. I shut a high. Glory be to God. And I intend to do it. With God's help. So this dancing in Wilson, oh, I don't want to upset people, don't want to offend people. Just get offended. And then get over it. Everybody gets offended. We are humans. It's easy to get offended. Somebody looks at, looks at us wrong and we get offended. Somebody doesn't say something right to us and we get offended. That, just, just, that, that tells me how childish we still are. And how much we need to what? Say it. Say it again. Return to the Lord who has torn and who has smitten through a cycle and another cycle. And it's like we go through this and we're still scratching our head like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? God doesn't love me. Yeah. And all the time God is saying, I'm doing this because I want to heal. Amen. I want to bind you up. I want to revive you. I want to raise you up and confirm who my purpose since eternity past has called you to be. But I can't do that when you're still full of yourself. Because then we take God's purpose when God confirms and we allow ourselves to get, look who I am. I realize more than ever just how small I am, how insignificant, how pathetic, how much in need of Him I am, how much I am not what I thought I was. And the more you see God and the glory of God, the more you see the corruption of yourself and the need to turn and go back and hide under his feet because the end the end is the beginning the end is going back again to where it all started this is the true end hallelujah okay 
Um, I think I'm getting somewhere, but I'm not sure. Where are we? Oh, yes. The fox. Go tell that fox. Don't you just love Jesus? I love how he expresses things. Behold, I cast out devils. And I do cures today and tomorrow. In other words, today and tomorrow, on the first and the second day, I'm cleaning. I'm casting out. I'm cured. I feel him more than that. On the first and the second day, I'm casting out devils. Jesus said, if I with the finger of God cast out devils, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. He brought the kingdom of God, and with the kingdom of God came deliverance, came freedom, came being set free, came being healed, came being delivered. We need to be delivered, first of all, from ourselves. So you go tell that old fox. I cast out devils and I do cure today and tomorrow. But on the third day, on the third day, I shall be perfected. Some people say, oh, that's got to do with the cross. No, no, it's not the cross. This has got to do with the completion of his purpose among men. This word perfected means to be complete, fulfilled, and accomplished. I will be complete, fulfilled, and accomplished on that third day. Right here in this place, in this town where I am, it it may very well be prophetically about something down the road. It may be about the third day of his resurrection. But he wasn't curing and casting out devils in those first two days when he was dead. But he was there. I'm going to do this. And you go tell him that I'm doing this cycle. I'm casting out. I'm curing. But there's a day of accomplishment. Tell him that he can't stop me. He cannot prevent me from being who my father has confirmed who I am. Hallelujah. On that third day, it will be accomplished. It will be perfected and finished regardless of that old fox. Don't let the foxes hinder you. There are foxes in your life. It's the little foxes that go up and destroy the wall. The small foxes. We've all got foxes in our life who hinder us, prevent us, plant doubt in our ears. I've had so many foxes in my ears over these last years. All kind of demonic voices. You this, you that, who you think you are, you can't, blah, blah, blah. Somebody, uh, some prominent person actually prophesied when we started Seven Pillars Church. And he prophesied and he said, Paul Hansen, he will never get a church off the ground. He has no money. He was right about the money part. But the other part he's not right about. Why? Because it's not about Paul Hansen. It's about the Lord. Look what this little church has done. Look what God has given us here and around the world. It's mind-boggling to watch what we have done with no money. And continue to grow with no money. God just keeps on building with no money. But yet it goes and it grows. Hey! So high. Why? Because that old fox cannot prevent. God is going to deliver and cure and bring things to a completion. The third day. Some of you are going to come into your third day. You are going to come into a completion of God's purpose for you. Hey! 
Oh, somebody prophetically shout. And when you do, don't be shocked at what God will use you to do. Don't be shocked at the people he will bring for you to touch, to reach, to deliver, to cure, to minister to, to give purpose and vision to, maybe even to pastor and shepherd and apostle, whatever, I don't know. All I do know, God is going to do it. Why? Because I believe we are a determined people to what? To who? To whom? Say that one more time. To the Lord. Just make sure every devil out of hell hears you. To the Lord. To the Lord. This is prelude. To the falling of the rain. That, this is my introduction to this lesson. And we're going to... Can, can I preach next Sunday? You're the pastor. If I may, I will. I said a higher... Glory to God. Come on, raise your hands and love Him for a moment. Just love the Lord. Love his name. Love his name. Love his name. Hallelujah. What a what an amazing little group of people you are. Sister Teresa Prophetess over there. You don't know how happy we are to be home. Thank you, Lord. We're glad to be here. I'm glad to feel Jesus in this place. I'm glad to see all of you in this place. I don't know of one church, one, in the 44 whatever years, something like that anyway. How old am I? I'm close. No, I'm 64. I had to think about it for a while. Not quite 64. Almost 64. Almost 64. So for 44 years, because I started at 20, I've never seen a pastor go away and everybody remain. I've never seen that in my whole life, ever. There's always change and shaking and trembling and you know which there's probably been shaking and trembling changes do that but I walk in here and like all my people are here and more and more so I honor you too praise God Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you can turn the video off.